Hi, and welcome to the Green Nurse Podcast, an unfiltered discussion related to health and healthcare. My name is Amy. And my name is Sarah. And we are your podcast hosts. So Sarah, why don't you take it away? What are we talking about today? We are going to be talking about inventions by nurses, and we just wanted to highlight all of the different awesome things that nurses have invented. And I also wanted to give a shout out to the uh, Facebook group World's OK's Nurses and also the official Nurses Rock group for giving us some uh, really good suggestions on things that nurses have invented. Um, so maybe, Amy, I'll let you get started with what you found. Yeah, like, I mean, I think this is actually a really great topic. And I think some of the inventions actually surprised me. And I guess I should have probably known a little bit more. Maybe they taught this in school, but I don't know. I just, some of them, I was like, oh, I didn't know a nurse did that. But anyways, I'll jump right into it. So um, in speaking about like diversity, because, you know, that's kind of a main topic now, I actually found a nurse who um, made some stuff for paralyzed war veterans. So essentially what she did Um, Her name was Bessie Griffin, and she was actually a volunteer nurse. And essentially, some war veterans had lost the ability to kind of eat and um, or use their limbs. So actually, she created an invention that would allow paralyzed veterans to feed themselves using a tube that they can kind of bite on with their own teeth, which I thought was kind of amazing. And it's surprising that they didn't actually have something like that. So... um, some of the information I kind of also read was like, even though she had worked for so long and in, invested thousands of dollars of her own money into the invention, the VA wasn't actually interested in paying the hundred thousand dollars. So instead she donated it to the French government who ended up using it in military hospitals worldwide. Um, and then again, Bessie was determined to prove that as a black female, we could do more than just, you know, nurse babies and clean toilets, which of course, we know that black women can do a lot more than that. So um, yeah, kind of shout outs to Bessie and, you know, it kind of sucks that she created this awesome thing that was used all throughout the world, but never really got the credit deserved to her. So yeah, Yeah, I think that's pretty awesome. And it's pretty revolutionary in her time that she was able to create this with no support at all, no technology, no finances, like she just did so much and paved the way, I think, for future female inventors. But at the same time, I think there's this ongoing theme that nurses do a lot of the work and then they often don't get very much credit for it. Right. Absolutely. So kudos to her. Mm-hmm. So one I had on the list here, the next one on my list was Barbara Braden. So I think everybody here knows the Braden pressure ulcer scale, which is used in many hospitals. And a lot of times you have to complete this at least once per shift. So the nursing, um, the nurse that invented this was Barbara Braden. And um, it's an assessment scale, which basically gives you six different categories where you have to assess a patient on, for example, their um, sensory capabilities, the moisture of their skin, activity level, mobility, nutrition, and friction and shear. And then they get a score. And based on that score, it kind of determines what your interventions should be. Right, right, right. So that's a pretty um, widespread use one, I think. Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, I think that's pretty much a part of all care plans, especially for any inpatient that's been admitted. So everybody has to have their brain and scale done. And I mean, pressure injuries are kind of like a huge a huge deal too, right? They can cause a lot of complex issues. And this is actually a really great invention that was made by a nurse. Mm -hmm. All right. So I, um, again, shout out to uh, our women's and babies nurses. And this nurse named uh, Sister Jean Ward, she actually invented neonatal phototherapy in the 1950s. So she was um, in charge of like pretty much the premature unit. And essentially she noticed that, um, or she thought it was really important just to bring babies out kind of into the sun. Like they thought that she thought that sunshine and warm air and just being outside fresh air was really good for newborn infants. And of course we think it's, it's, it's good anyways, but essentially what happened was she, um, she would take these babies out and one of the doctors had noticed that a patch on the skin still left a small area of yellowing. So they had noticed that the, the bilirubin levels or just from her taking the babies outside actually reduced um, those bilirubin levels. So yeah, it's kind of a really clever way to understand how the body works and 
she did it by taking babies outside and realizing that they needed pho phototherapy. Basically giving them a suntan without using pretty any good. technology. I think that's pretty cool because even in this day and age, we have phototherapy and we have all these other interventions, but a lot of nurses will still par tell parents to keep baby by the window just for that extra little bit of sunlight. And for that reason, I always say to parents, because when I used to teach prenatal classes, they would say, oh, at what age can I take the baby out? It's like, well, the baby can be out any time, really. As long as you are stable and there's no cause for concern, you can just start taking the baby out pretty much right away, as long as you're making sure that they're dressed appropriately, um, that they're not overheating and that kind of thing. Absolutely. I think there was actually another nurse, I can't, to be honest, I forget her name, maybe you would know, that actually created not, so we, we had a nurse that created phototherapy, and this other nurse created kind of like, um, a, it's not a billy, it's like a, a the, billy bonnet? Bill, yeah, the billy bonnet, yeah. Oh, so yeah, was, yeah, I had that on my list yeah. too. So it oh, was okay. someone well, named Sharon Rogone, who worked as a nurse in a hospital um, in California, and she created actually little glasses that were meant for newborn infants that were undergoing um, phototherapy. And basically, instead of tying them around the head, she just created this whole bonnet like that would hold it in place. And um, this was in the 1990s, so it was quite a while ago. And um, she started from companies and also created lots of other interven or inventions for preemies. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely pretty cool. <laughs> There's one other one on my list, and I can't believe that we don't have this in Canada, Amy. It's called um, a ClickSmart Snap It Ampule Opener. So you know when you have those glass ampules and you have to snap the top off because you need to open it to get the medication out? Right. I always used to use a, um unopened alcohol swab or I'd use an unopened like gauze pad basically to open it and I never I never cut myself in the glass I don't know if you did but apparently a lot of people did and um, this nurse in Australia invented this ampule opener basically it's like a little metal device that cuts the top open and holds it and then you push a button and you can eject it into a sharps container oh yeah it's like so simple and I'm like, why didn't we ever think of that? And and we're still like, at least where I used to work, we're always just snapping them open and leaving the glass shard to roll around until you have time to put it in the container it goes in. Yeah, that's pretty much how, you know, oxytocin came in those little glass ampules. And then of course, you're super terrified because if it does cut you, then you're going to get oxytocin <laughs> that you don't <laughs> necessarily want in your body. But I mean, yeah, that's kind of amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then I watched this two minute video about how it tells you to clean it because you know everyone's all about cleaning these days and reusing equipment. It is so simple to clean too. It's like three or four parts. You can take it apart easily. You can alcohol swab it and then just put it back together. I think this would have changed my life. Not really, but it would have changed a lot of what I did if we had this thing. Oh, I have to be honest. Like every time I had to open an ampule, I was terrified. I was like, I'm going to get cut. <laughs> But yeah, that would have been great. So another one that I found, and I'm sure it's on your list as well, is the invention of the crash cart. So this was one that I didn't know, which is kind of, I guess, maybe crazy that I didn't know it. But essentially, um, a nurse named Anita Dorr, she was an RN, she invented the first crash cart in uh, 1968. So she was working in the emergency department. And she was really concerned about how long it took for staff to collect everything. So like, if I think about it now, when we have a code, there's so many different things that might be needed, whether it's a PEDS patient or an adult patient, whatever the case may be, there's a lot of different equipment that you might need, especially if you have to intubate, you need fluids, you need IV setups, all that stuff. I can only imagine these nurses like running around and just trying to get all of these various different things that weren't amalgamated. So essentially, um, what Anita Dorr did was she she made a list. She rounded up all of this, the the equipment required to treat a critically ill patient. And then she created, her and her husband actually created a, a red crash cart. So um, I think they made a prototype in their basement. She was off and she made um, the first crash cart. So it's kind of amazing. I'm really glad that she got the credit because it could have been one of those things that everybody just copied and no one ever gave the proper credit to. And I can't even imagine attending a code without a crash cart. Like, can you imagine all the running around? And it's already bad enough as it is. If anyone's ever been in a code, like you look at the crash cart after a code, it is 
it is destroyed completely. And it takes sometimes hours to restock and organize everything. But at least you have what you need in that moment, hopefully. Right, right, right. And think about how many times we've restocked crash carts. And I never stopped to think about who invented it. I just, you know, it's just always been there. But I think that's a really great invention by a nurse, for sure. No, absolutely. Like, I think to myself that even in situations now, like, say we run like a mock code or whatever, we still have all the equipment there, but there's still lots of, like, you know, process issues that you may see in terms of even maybe where the equipment might be placed. And I can't imagine that, you know, this thing didn't exist and actually someone had to kind of like think it up. So, I mean, it's amazing how much has changed over the years, but again, you know, um, I think it's just, it's just one of those things that we kind of, we, we neglect to appreciate. For sure. I have another invention here that is basically a transfer board with a built in scale. And, um, it's really helpful for patients that are immobile because it's really hard to transfer them. And if they are in a bed now that doesn't have an automatic weigh scale, which a lot of beds don't, then it's really kind of troublesome to get their weight after they've, you know, been moved into bed and things deter- de- I guess things that um, are dependent on the patient's weight would be medication dosages. And this way you're kind of getting two birds with one stone. You're transferring the patient and you're weighing them at the same time. So This was actually invented in, I believe it was the UK, and they call it the patient transfer scale. So that was invented by a nurse named Jillian Taylor. And I think a lot of these inventions is just something that you discover on the job that you realize is a problem and you're working to solve this problem and you realize that this requires an invention of some kind. So this is kind of what she did. Wow, that's really neat. I didn't didn't know about that one either. I guess working in labor and delivery and postpartum, we don't technically need to weigh patients. So it never really crossed my mind how difficult it could be. And even in the NICU, our isolates came with a built-in scale to do the weighing. And of course, babies are in the NICU. They're never more than 10 pounds. So it never really was an issue for me, but it is an issue for a lot of nurses. For sure. Holy crow. Yeah. Another one that I have here is a nurse named Ada May Allen. And she actually created the um, disposable liners uh, so that moms could moms at hospitals could throw throw them away just after one use. And essentially, uh, like while a baby would suck on the traditional bottle, um, a partial vacuum formed inverting the nipple. But if you put in a plastic liner, it actually allowed the sides to close in as the baby drank the milk. So really not getting in all that air, additional air that's not necessarily uh, needed. So another really great invention and they don't just use uh, liners in hospitals you can actually get plastic liners um outside the hospital so for example one of the things i used to do was when i would pump i would actually pump my milk into a a plastic liner and um it just made sure that like it was like my baby would get all the nutrients as opposed to any of it sticking to the sides and no air really so yeah pretty neat invention. Did you find it helped with gas? Because I know babies often get a lot of gas through bottle feeding. Well, I felt, I found that it helped because I actually had, um, we had acid reflux with one of our twins. And I found that using the liners, when I switched over to just from exclusively breastfeeding to like pumping and bottle feeding, that it really helped because we would just use, we had like the, I don't know if you know, uh, the like Dr. Brown's bottles. The I do. Ones. I do. Yeah. And I was like, okay, let's try like these ones with the liners. And it made a huge difference. I feel definitely less gassy and less. Well, I didn't even know it was in the hospital because I've only ever seen those Playtex liners that they sell at the pharmacy. I didn't even know it was something they had in the hospital because we never used it, at least in the hospitals I worked at. Probably more of a cost thing than anything. Okay, so next on my list is a nurse named Brian Mohika. Um, He was a nurse and also a United States Air Force veteran, and he invented something called cathware. So it's basically specialized underwear that can also hold a catheter. And um, so what he noticed is that when he was working in radiology, a lot of patients would come and they had drains and they would try to just hold the catheter bag up with like elasticized bands. And a lot of times it would cut off the circulation to the limb, which often made the problem worse. Or they'd be, a lot of patients would have trouble when they were going to the bathroom that their catheters would come dislodged and they have to go back and have it reinserted. 
Um, so he basically one day saw a patient going to the bathroom and had their catheter kind of safety pin to their underwear. And that got him thinking that maybe he just needed to make underwear that had the proper um, pocket for the catheter, um, the catheter bag. And so he created a company and um, applied for a patent back in 2013. And the underwear is in all different colors and all different designs, which I think a lot of people would appreciate. So it's not just functional, but it's stylish at the same time. (laughs) Stylish, (laughs) catheter underwear. You got to make it work, right? Like it's got to be something that patients would want to wear. Like I I think if you made something that was uncomfortable and, Di- didn't you know like fit your wardrobe that it'd be it'd be you wouldn't want to wear it right so I think this guy's got the right idea and and uh it sounds like a great invention I have one more so I I hope you have a couple more but I have one more that I had on my list um this nurse but this was done in 1985 and it was by a nurse named Terry Barton Salinas her idea had to do with uh, medications and essentially essentially to reduce the amount of medical errors um, related to IV fluids. So she got this idea when she was working again as a labor and delivery nurse and had to use multiple lines for newborns. What she did was she made the, she called them the color safe IV lines. And now um, they're just different colored lines for different medications. Just a quick and easy uh, fix really. And I think like we're taught to label the lines. And I think even the fact that they're color coded, that's even more helpful, that extra visual to say, hey, you know, um, this mm-hmm. is a particular medication because we definitely do know that there are errors that can occur. Right. And when I was working as a NICU nurse, we we always used the color coded lines. And it wasn't just the line itself. It was the port that you would attach the syringe to or the IV line to so you could exactly see what you were doing. And it was always the same color for everything. So I think that, like you said, the visual really helps. And especially in any acute care unit, you can be running as many as 10 medications and fluids at once. And it's just like, there's so much going on. There's the IV fluids, there's the um, type of respiratory support they're on. There could be um, like a CO2 detector. There's like so much going on, the O2 sat detector that I think this personally, of all the inventions that we're talking about, this probably helped me the most when I was a NICU nurse. So kudos to Terry. Yeah, awesome. Um, A couple others I had on my list were actually the ostomy bag. So the ostomy bag is everywhere these days. And it was actually a nurse named Elise. And um, her little sister had colon cancer. And after surgery, she was supposed to be on an appliance, like basically a tube that was going to drain the um, stool for the rest of her life. And she thought, well, instead of being tied down, like bedridden, basically, could we not just create some sort of bag that would be attached to her abdomen and allow her at least to be able to move around? And so this was way back in 1954. I didn't even realize there was that much plastic around in 1954. Maybe I'm just not, <laughs> maybe I just don't know the history of plastic. I'm imagining back in 19, the 1950s, everything's like glass or metal, or I don't even know what other materials, like rubber or something. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Another one was actually, and this is surprising to me, was sanitary pads. So Back in World War I, um, nurses and doctors used a material called cellu cotton, which I guess is just a variation of cotton to treat um, soldiers' wounds. And they realized that this was five times more absorbent than cotton, which at the time was in short supply. And the field nurses also used it unofficially as a sanitary pad. And within a few years afterwards, um, they just they just um, developed this into a commercial product called Kotex, which is still around. For pads. Um, so that's that's pretty surprising to me that it took until World War One to invent this product. But hey, at least we have now it's sort of evolved into all these other feminine hygiene products like tampons and diva cups and, you know, all kinds of things that are really um, giving us the freedom that we need. Right, right. Like I could only imagine like what they would have had to use back then to kind of um, in terms of like sanitary napkins. So 
I'm very happy that someone created this for sure. Yeah, I know. And this kind of goes back to our episode where we had Dr. Sophia Yen and she talked about how, you know, periods are optional, but this was like the step before that. At least we're in control of our feminine hygiene and we're trying to do something about it. And I think in a lot of countries around the world, like especially in third world countries, they're, they don't have any feminine hygiene products and they often use like old rags and things like that. And that can lead to infection. Um, right. I think it's an issue for sure. And never mind the fact that a lot of women just don't get their period because they're having lots of children and breastfeeding back to back. And so it's just not even something on their radar. Well, I just wanted to talk about one last invention, which is called the Macy catheter. And this is something that I have personally not used, but it's something that is intended to provide rectal access to administer liquids and medications. And so the yeah, so you know how after after women have C-sections, we would sometimes give a Tylenol per rectum. Like we would just take a Tylenol tablet and insert it per rectum. It's actually not the most effective way of giving um, rectal medications because if you think about it, it takes the body some time to actually break down the wall of the capsule and absorb it. So they actually found a way to administer liquids per rectum with this um, device called a Macy catheter. And so the indications would be administration, well, basically when you can't administer through the oral route or it fails, if you need to administer fluids and electrolytes, and if you need to administer enemas. Um, so basically, it's the secondary way of giving medications when there isn't an oral route or it's not appropriate for IV access. So um, this was developed, it actually doesn't say when it was developed, but it was um, created by someone named Brad Macy, who was a nurse and also um, worked in veteran hospice for over 20 years. And he was inspired by a patient that was terminally agitated and not responding to a solid form of a rectally delivered medication. But when he administered the same medication in liquid form, it um, he actually noticed that the effect took took much it took effect much sooner in the patient and the patient was sleeping within 30 minutes and so after after he realized that he practiced this many times um, with the application of medication in highly concentrated form and it's usually just in the outer part of the rectum he realized that this had really good implications for hospice and palliative patients worldwide so he developed the macy catheter um, had it patented and developed for commercial use and um, it's still in use today. So that's awesome. Yeah, that, like I definitely haven't used anything like that in my practice either. But uh, it sounds kind of amazing. I wonder in terms of comfort, like is it relatively comfort comfortable to use or any of these things? But of course, I don't think you said you, you haven't used it either, right? It says that the tube is small. So I'm hoping that it is comfortable because... I mean, obviously, it would not be ideal if it wasn't comfortable. And then you'd have to give pain medications or it wouldn't be able to stand for a long time. But I'm thinking and hoping it is comfortable. I, th I hope so, too. And, you know, we did we did have a lot on our list that we didn't mention. But these are basically the top ones that I found. And, you know, a lot of a lot of people did suggest other inventions, but either they were not invented by nurses when I did a little bit more research or... I just couldn't find who invented it, basically. So so a lot of the different things that people brought up might have been invented by nurses, but just by doing a quick search, I wasn't able to determine it for sure. And I'm sure there's tons of other inventions by nurses that we weren't able to touch on. And I think it's more about nurses just tooting their own horn and you know making it known that they invented this invention because we really want to celebrate all of the different contributions that nurses bring to the world of healthcare. Yeah, absolutely. So anything else that you wanted to add, Amy? You know, people really see nurses as some, not all people, but some people see them as kind of the singular entity. Like we just kind of go in and we look after patients and that's it. And, and they forget that nursing is also a science. So there's much, much more to that um, in terms of our practice, in terms of seeing things and um, observing areas where there are gaps and saying, hey, you know, maybe we could do something different. And we use the the essence of nursing science to create things. So nurses are innovators and they are creators as well. Absolutely. So if you like listening to this episode, please subscribe. We are available on Apple Podcasts, uh, Amazon, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and um, Google Podcasts. 
please also follow us along on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Take care.